to lay the blame for every storm or hurricane on global warming. But is there any scientific basis for this? This is purely propaganda. Every textbook in meteorology is telling you the main source of weather disturbances is the temperature difference between the tropics and the pole. And we're told in a warmer world, this difference will get less. Now that would tell you, you will have less storminess, you'll have less variability. But for some reason that isn't considered catastrophic. So you're told the opposite. News reports frequently argue that even a mild increase in global temperature could lead to a catastrophic melting of the polar ice caps. But what does Earth's climate history tell us? We happen to have temperature records of Greenland that go back thousands of years. Greenland has been much warmer. Just a thousand years ago, Greenland was warmer than it is today, yet it didn't have a dramatic melting event. Even if we talk about something like permafrost, a great deal of the permafrost, that icy layer under the forests of Russia, for example, seven or 8,000 years ago melted far more than we're having any evidence about it melting now. So in other words, this is a historical pattern again, but the world didn't come to a crunching halt because of it. Professor Siunishi Akasofu is head of the International Arctic Research Center in Alaska. The IARC is the world's leading Arctic research institute. Professor Akasofu insists that over time, the ice caps are always naturally expanding and contracting. There are reports from time to time a big chunk of ice uh, break away from the Antarctic continent. Uh, those must have been happening all the time. But because now we have a satellite, that can detect those. That's why they become the news. This data from NASA's meteorological satellites shows the huge natural expansion and contraction of the polar sea ice taking place in the 1990s. Actually, all the TV programs that relate to uh, global warming show big chunk of ice falling from the edge of the uh, glaciers. But people forget that ice is always moving. News reports frequently show images of ice breaking from the edge of the Arctic. What they don't say is that this is as ordinary an event in the Arctic as falling leaves on an English autumn day. They ask me, did you see ice falling from the edge of the glaciers? Yes. That's the spring breakup. That's happened every year. Press come to us all the time, you know, they, I want to see something that the greenhouse disaster, I say there is none. <laughs> Alarming television programs raise the fearful prospect of vast tidal waves flooding Britain. But what causes the sea level to change and how fast does it happen? Sea level changes over the world in general are governed fundamentally by two factors. What we would call local factors, the relationship of the sea to the land, which often, by the way, is to do with the land rising or falling than anything to do with the sea. But if you're talking about what we call eustatic changes of sea, worldwide changes of sea, that's through the thermal expansion of the oceans, nothing to do with melting ice. And that's an enormously slow and long process. People say, oh, I see the ocean doing this last year. That means that something changed in the atmosphere last year. And this is not necessarily true at all. In fact, it's actually quite unlikely because it can take hundreds to thousands of years for the deep ocean to respond to uh, forces and changes that are taking place at the surface. It is also suggested that even a mild rise in temperature will lead to the spread northward of deadly insect-borne tropical diseases like malaria. But is this true? Professor Paul Reiter of the Pasteur Institute in Paris is recognized as one of the world's leading experts on malaria and other insect-borne diseases. He is a member of the World Health Organization Expert Advisory Committee, was chairman of the American Committee of Medical Entomology of the American Society for Tropical Medicine, and lead author on the health section of the US National Assessment of the Potential Consequences of Climate Variability. As Professor Reiter is eager to point out, mosquitoes thrive in very cold temperatures. 
mosquitoes are not specifically tropical. Most people will realize that in temperate regions there are mosquitoes. Um, in fact, mosquitoes are extremely abundant uh, in the Arctic. The most devastating epidemic of malaria was in the Soviet Union in the 1920s. There were something like 13 million cases a year and something like 600,000 deaths a tremendous catastrophe that reached up to the Arctic Circle. Archangel had 30,000 cases and about 10,000 deaths. So it's not a tropical disease. Yet these people uh, in, in, in the global warming fraternity invent the idea that malaria will move northwards. Climate scare stories cannot be blamed solely on sloppy or biased journalism. According to Professor Reiter, hysterical alarms have been encouraged by the reports of the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or IPCC. On the spread of malaria, the IPCC warns us that... Mosquito species that transmit malaria do not usually survive where the mean winter temperature drops below 16 to 18 degrees Celsius. According to Professor Reiter, this is clearly untrue. I was horrified. Uh, to read the second and the third assessment reports because there was so much misinformation without any kind of recourse or virtually without mention of uh, the scientific literature, the truly scientific literature, the literature by specialists in those fields. In a letter to the Wall Street Journal, Professor Frederick Seitz, former president of America's National Academy of Sciences, revealed that IPCC officials had censored the comments of scientists. He said that this report is not the version that was approved by the contributing scientists. At least 15 key sections of the science chapter had been deleted. These included statements like None of the studies cited has shown clear evidence that we can attribute climate changes to increases in greenhouse gases. No study to date has positively attributed all or part of the observed climate changes to man-made causes. Professor Seitz concluded I have never witnessed a more disturbing corruption of the peer review process than the events that led to this IPCC report. In its reply, the IPCC did not deny making these deletions, but it said there was no dishonesty or bias in the report and that uncertainties about the cause of global warming had been included. The changes had been made, it 